Everybody loves Pichon. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing Pichon Lalande and Pichon Baron. I'm going to start out by discussing their history, and then I'll get a little bit into what makes each of these producers special. I'll talk about their grape growing and winemaking practices, and each of the wines that they produce. I'll then get into some of my favorite vintages for each producer, and discuss buying strategies for both Pichon Lalande and Pichon Baron. Pichon Lalande and Pichon Baron started out as one combined winery way back in 1694. In 1760, Baron Joseph du Pichon Longueville began managing this estate when he was only 19 years old. Joseph continued to manage the estate for an impressive 70 years until he was 90 years old. At that time, which was around 1850, Joseph was on his deathbed and decided to bequeath his estate to his five children. Joseph wanted to be fair to everyone, and so he gave his two sons two-fifths of the vineyards and his three daughters the other three-fifths. A short time later, in 1855, the 1855 classification of Bordeaux came out, and in that classification, both Pichon Lalande and Pichon Baron were classified as second growths. Since chivalry is still alive and well on my channel, we are going to start with Pichon Lalande. Of course, Pichon Lalande's full name is Pichon Longueville Comtesse du Lalande, but many refer to it as just Pichon Lalande, and so that's what I'm going to do for purposes of ease in this video. Pichon Lalande has been one of the most consistent left bank producers, certainly for the last 50 or 60 years. Even from the time period from 1961 to around 1980, Pichon Lalande was quite consistent, and even more consistent with respect to its quality than some of the first growth Bordeaux producers. But around 1978, there was a new manager who was responsible for the property, and she made substantial improvements that resulted in taking the quality of the wines up to a new level. Among other things, one of her biggest accomplishments was increasing the vineyard holdings from 40 hectares to an impressive 89 hectares. So she more than doubled the holdings, and some of these newly acquired vineyards have been responsible for some of the quality increases at Pichon Lalande since that time. In 2007, Pichon Lalande was acquired by Champagne House Louis Roderer, and the new owner has spared absolutely no expense in upgrading the entire operation. Among other things, they've modernized the winemaking facilities, renovated the chateau, and embarked on an aggressive replanting program in the vineyard. This replanting program is designed to ensure that the best rootstocks are planted in the best locations with the best soils suitable for each particular grape varietal. They've also begun to vinify on a parcel by parcel basis and to use optical sorting equipment, which helps to ensure that only fruit that meets their lofty standards makes it into the final wine. Pichon Lalon now has around 102 hectares of vineyards that are divided into more than 100 different parcels or plots. Although the replanting program is ongoing, the ultimate plan is for the vineyards to be planted to 65% Cabernet Sauvignon, 25% Merlot, 7% Cabernet Franc, and 3% Petit Verdot. This represents a big increase in the amount of Cabernet Sauvignon that's planted at Pichon Lalande, as historically there was only around 45% Cabernet Sauvignon, and Merlot was much more significant historically than it will be on a going forward basis. The soils in Pichon Lalonde's vineyards and their proximity to the Gironde estuary are extremely important to the production of high quality wine. The soils are gravel with clay subsoils, and the proximity to the Gironde estuary provides a moderating influence. In 2017, for example, this moderating influence helped to prevent damage from the frost that devastated much of the Bordeaux region, certainly on the left bank of Bordeaux. But vineyards that were very close to the Gironde estuary, such as those of Pichon Lalande, were spared from much of that damage because the Gironde estuary helped to ensure that the temperatures were a little bit warmer. Pichon Lalande began organic farming in 2021. Pichon Lalande was 100% biodynamic as of 2021 as well. Pichon Lalande will be certified biodynamic beginning with the 2024 vintage. What is it that makes Pichon Lalande so special? Well, Pichon Lalande is ideally situated within the Poyac appellation, very close to Saint Julien, and adjacent to first growth Bordeaux producer Chateau Latour. As mentioned, the vineyards are very close to the Gironde estuary, 
and thus receive beneficial moderating influences. Pichon Lalonde's wines appeal to a broad variety of people because they're wines of elegance and finesse. They're known for being sensuous wines with silky tannins that are even approachable when they're young, but certainly gain complexity with additional age as well. Some speculate that the elegant, sensuous style of Pichon Lalonde arises out of the fact that Pichon Lalonde has historically been managed by women, whereas the more structured, powerful Pichon Baron is due to the fact that Pichon Baron was managed by men. As a practical matter, a large part of the reason for the nature of the stylistic differences between the two is the fact that, at least historically, Pichon Lalonde has had a much higher percentage of Merlot, around 30% or more in some vintages. While Pichon Lalonde was classified as a second growth in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux, it's virtually unanimously regarded as a so-called super second Bordeaux. By that, I mean that it's a wine that's capable of rivaling the quality of that of the first gross in some vintages. A prime example of that is a legendary 1982 vintage, which was certainly one of the best wines of that entire vintage and remains one of my all-time favorite wines. Pichon Lalonde produces four wines today, and we're going to start with the top wine. As mentioned, the Pichon Lalonde top wine has been increasing its Cabernet Sauvignon percentage in recent years. In the past, the Merlot percentage used to be more than 30%, but with the 2018 vintage, for example, there's 71% Cabernet Sauvignon and only 23% Merlot, with 5% Cabernet Franc and just 1% Petit Verdot. The fairly dramatic reduction in Merlot has resulted in a stylistic change to Pichon Lalonde. While it's still a wine that has some elegance, it definitely has more power than it used to have, and a little bit more austerity than it did previously. The Pichon Lalonde top wine is matured in 50% New French Oak for 18 months or so. Pichon Lalonde produces on average around 15,000 cases annually of this top wine. New vintages of the top wine sell for around $200 in the U.S., this is a wine that definitely needs at least five years of additional bottle aging after you purchase it before you start digging in, and it will last three to four decades with ease. Since 1973, Pichon Lalonde has also produced a second wine. The second wine used to be called Reserve de la Comtesse, but in 2019 it was changed to Pichon Comtesse Reserve. This is an excellent wine in its own right, and it's an extraordinary value as well. This is a highly regarded wine that receives 94 point scores among critics quite frequently, but yet it sells for only around $55 or $60 even in the United States. This is a wine with a much higher percentage of Merlot, around 47%, and then there's about 43% Cabernet Sauvignon and 10% Petit Verdot. This is a wine that in addition to being much more affordable than the top wine, is one that you can enjoy much younger, as it's designed to drink either on release or certainly within a few years after release, but is certainly capable of aging for 15 to 20 years as well. Pichon Lalonde does make another red wine as well. However, it's made in extremely small quantities. I've never tasted it, and I couldn't even find a recent vintage that was currently on sale in the United States. So I'm not going to spend much time talking about that wine in this video. Interestingly, however, beginning with the 2022 vintage, Pichon Lalonde will also be selling its first ever white wine. This white wine will be a blend of Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc, and the grapes for this wine are planted in some of the coolest parcels on the property. So probably as part of the replanting program, the team decided that those plots were unsuitable for the production of high-quality Bordeaux varietals, and instead decided to plant white grapes there, which can be harvested earlier than some of the red grapes. As for my top vintages of Pichon Lalonde, you have to start with 1982. This vintage is absolutely legendary, and while some of the bottles can be hit or miss today, when you find one that's on, it's absolutely life-changing. After the 1982, some of my favorites include 1996, 2000, 2003, 2005, 2009 and 10, and then from 2014 on. While Pichon Lalonde has had an admirable record of quality and consistency for many years, things reached a whole new level of quality and excellence beginning with the 2016 vintage. This is due to all the improvements and investments that were made by the new owner beginning in 2007. Those investments began to pay off and the results are now apparent in the bottle. 
Beginning with the 2016 vintage, the Pichon Le Lande wines are, in general, candidates for wine of the vintage, and the quality not only rivals that of many of the first gross, but have been some of the best wines ever produced by this historic property. Just by way of example, the 2019 and 2020 vintages have received perfect 100-point scores, and the 2018 vintage received numerous 98-point scores, and was also the Wine Spectator number 2 Wine of the Year for 2021. It's now time to discuss my buying strategy for Pichon Le Lande. Normally, I've been recommending that for many top Bordeaux wines that it's more cost-effective and also a better idea to buy back vintages of the wines rather than paying some of the higher new release prices. But I'm not going to tell you that with respect to Pichon Le Lande. This is so for a couple of reasons. First, prices in the secondary market have been skyrocketing for older wines, particularly of quality collectible wines like Pichon Le Lande. For example, the price of the 2000 Pichon Le Lande now exceeds $400 a bottle. In contrast, some of the new release wines, such as the 2020 Pichon Le Lande, which is a 100-point wine and which rivals the quality of that of many of the first gross, sells for around $200 a bottle, so about half. Given the fact that the new release wines cost about half as much as some of the top vintages with age on them, they're certainly a tempting buy, and that's especially true given the fact that the quality reached a whole new level beginning with 2016. So at least if you have a decent time horizon, I would not hesitate to buy new vintages of Pichon Lalande. For those who don't have the time or patience to buy the top wine and wait for it to mature, or who don't want to spend $200 on a bottle of wine, I highly recommend the Pichon Lalande second wine. This outstanding wine sells for only around 55 or 60 bucks. It's a highly regarded wine in its own right, and it's one you can enjoy much younger and which has outstanding quality for the price. You simply can't go wrong with that wine, and it's one I'd recommend for people even who buy the top wine, as it's one you can enjoy while you're waiting for the top wine to have additional complexity that comes with bottle age. If you're interested in wine recommendations, wine collecting strategies, and learning more about wine, please do subscribe to my channel. I've been collecting wine for more than 15 years and also have a level 4 diploma from the WSET. So I have both formal certification as well as substantial practical knowledge from the School of Hard Knocks. Unlike Pichon Le Lande, Pichon Brown was not a producer that had a record of consistency and excellence dating back to the 1960s. In fact, Pichon Barone was known as a perennial underachiever from the early 1960s until the mid to late 1980s. That all changed in 1987 when the new ownership installed the Lynchbosch proprietor as the manager of Pichon Barone. Almost immediately, the quality began to improve. These improvements were accomplished through several initiatives. First, the grapes were harvested later. Second, there was a more strict selection of fruit. Third, there was a second wine introduced. And fourth, there was a higher percentage of new oak used for the maturation process. These initiatives paid off almost immediately, and the 89 and 1990 vintages of Pichon Barone were outstanding. Beginning with the 2009 vintage, the Pichon Barone quality level took another huge step forward, and they've been producing exceptional wines ever since. And there's really no reason that Pichon Barone should not produce an exceptional wine. They're located very close to Chateau Latour, which arguably has the best terroir on all of the left bank. In addition, the Pichon Baron vineyards have gravel soils in southern exposure that are ideally situated to the production of high quality Cabernet Sauvignon. The Pichon Baron style is a balance between power and elegance. It's definitely a wine that's been, historically at least, more structured and powerful than the Pichon Lalande wines. Pichon Barone has 73 hectares of vineyards that are planted to 65% Cabernet Sauvignon, 30% Merlot, 3% Cabernet Franc, and 2% Petit Verdot. The Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot is not used in the top line, however. These grapes are used only in the second wines for Pichon Barone. As with most producers these days, the vineyards are farmed on a plot-by-plot -plot basis, and they vinify not only on a parcel-by-parcel -parcel or plot-by-plot -plot basis, but also by grape variety. One reason for the huge increase in quality around 2009-2010 is the fact that Pichon Barone has been much more stringent with its selection process than it was in years past. 
In addition to implementing an optical sorting machine that helps them to eliminate fruit that does not meet their high standards, they've just generally been using a much lower percentage of the harvest in their top wine. In 2000, for example, they used to produce 30,000 cases of the top wine, but more recently they're producing only about half that amount. Pichon Barome produces three different wines. The first of which I'll be discussing is the top wine. The top wine comes from old vines on historic plots that were used to produce wine way back in 1694. Pichon Barone is a powerful, intense, concentrated wine, but it also has some elegance. It's capable of aging effortlessly in the cellar for decades. Recent vintages are extraordinarily impressive and typically score in the high 90s. The recent vintages have been a little softer and a little bit more approachable in their youth than past vintages, but it's still definitely much better with substantial aging on it. In terms of price, the top wine often sells for around $175 a bottle for more recent vintages. And as mentioned, the top wine is generally a blend that consists of only two grapes, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. The 2020 vintage, for example, is 75% Cabernet Sauvignon and about 25% Merlot. With respect to the maturation process, there's typically 18 months on average of aging in 70% new French oak and 30% one-year-old oak barrels. Pichon Barome produces two different second wines, and the first of which is the Les Terrelles du Longueville and has been sold since about the mid-1980s. This wine has a higher percentage of Merlot than the top wine and also uses the Cabernet Franc that's produced by Pichon Barome. A representative example is a recent vintage that had around 65% Merlot, around 28-29% Cabernet Sauvignon, and about 7% Cabernet Franc. This is a wine that enters its drinking window with about 3-5 to five years of additional bottle aging after release, and one that you can enjoy for up to 15 years or so. It's a wine that's generally highly acclaimed by critics, and which sells for only around $42 or so a bottle. So definitely a compelling value, and one that you want to keep an eye on, as it's hard to do better than that in terms of price to quality ratio. The other second wine was just introduced in 2012, namely Les Griffons du Pichon Baron. This is a wine that's made in a more modern style, and it's also an excellent value. It does cost a little bit more than the other second wine. This one sells for around $55 or $60 a bottle. This wine contains about 50% Merlot. 42% Cabernet Sauvignon, and then the third grape for this wine is the Petit Verdot. So there's no Cabernet Franc in this wine, and the bulk of the Petit Verdot that's produced by Pichon Baron goes into this wine. This is one that you can enjoy young, or it can be aged for up to two decades as well. So another excellent value, and one that would be an appropriate cellar defender, and give you lots of flexibility, given the fact that you can enjoy it either young or with additional age. With respect to my buying strategy for Pichon Barone, if you can find a reasonable price on the 1990, I highly recommend picking it up. That's an absolutely outstanding wine and one that I've been enjoying for more than a decade and which still shows well to this day. In addition, I would not hesitate to purchase the 2009 and 2010 vintages, and then you can buy with confidence from 2014 to the present as well, as Pichon Barone has been on a tremendous hot streak the past six or seven vintages. Better still, with Pichon Barone, the prices are even lower than for Pichon Lalonde. I found some single bottles, for example, selling for around $175 a bottle. While this is certainly not inexpensive, it's definitely a relative bargain compared to some of the first growth Bordeaux, and also compared to lots of Napa Cabernet Sauvignon, for example. And for those who don't want to wait for this wine to mature, or who don't want to pay that much for a bottle of wine, I highly recommend the two Pichon Barone second wines. You really can't go wrong with either one of them, as they both offer compelling value for the price. Pichon Baron and Pichon Lalande are both Super Second Bordeaux producers. If you'd like to learn more about Super Seconds, be sure to check out my Super Second Bordeaux video, which is in pinned comment below.